Hey guys, so since it's been so heavily requested, today we're going to go over lap timers and how I go about recording data at the track. Uh, I'm sure there's other ways to do it, but this is just how I figured out how to do it. Also of note, before we jump into this, there is going to be a bit of variation on what products work best for you, depending on what kind of phone you have, whether you have like an Android or uh, an iPhone. Some products work slightly different or not at all, depending on what operating system you have. So we'll go over that as well. So my main goal was trying to put together a solution that was able to match the performance of an all-in-one data logger for a fraction of the price. So since it's so popular, our benchmark is going to be the AIM Solo 2, which is listed at $460, and we should be looking to be around half of that price. There are four main components you're going to need to get this all to work together, an external GPS, an OBD2 port reader, a lap timer app, and a phone mount that you would trust to secure your phone when on track. Let's start with lap timers. There's a couple to choose from, but the main ones I'm familiar with and know of are Track Addict, Race Chrono, and Harry's Lap Timer. We're only going to be talking about the first two since these are the ones I actually have experience with. Uh, both Track Addict and Race Chrono have free versions that let you try them out before purchasing. Track Addict has a nice looking UI as well as it pairs well with Race Render, which if you're not aware is actually made by the same company. Um, but I have run into some weird glitches with it, such as lap data being displayed as one giant lap. Also, I've had my OBD2 data not being recorded when it should have been. Pairing other devices just isn't as reliable as an experience as I, what I've had with uh, Race Chrono, which is my choice of lap timer and by far the better user experience in my opinion. I've had no issues whatsoever connecting both the OBD2 port and the external GPS over Bluetooth, which considering how f***ing annoying Bluetooth can be is a pretty big deal to me. But the biggest feature that made me interested in the app originally is that the delta between your current lap and your best lap is prominently displayed and it's super easy to use while on track. Uh, I use this all the time, it makes it so 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 much easier to see what the fastest way through the corner is in real time. Another awesome feature that I haven't seen many people talking about is that you can actually export your data into a data analysis program such as Circuit Tools or Z1 Analyzer. Now with your lap timer picked out, let's move on to pick out an external GPS. There's a ton of options out there, but we're looking for at least a 10 hertz GPS, which if you're not familiar with that measurement, it just means how often the GPS updates. In this case, 10 hertz translates to the GPS updating every tenth of a second. Since we're on this topic, most phones not paired with an external GPS only have a frequency of 1 hertz, aka it updates uh, once every second. Basically, that's complete trash and totally useless if you're trying to use this as a lap timer to improve your driving. Both Track Addict and Race Chrono have a list of which external GPSs work best for their app, and I'll, I'll link them in the description and hopefully remember to throw them up on screen. But again, uh, not all GPSs work the same or at all, depending on what kind of phone you have, so make sure you check to see what's compatible before you buy. Let's go through Race Chrono's recommended uh, external GPSs. So the first one up for the iPhone and iPad is the Racebox Mini which comes in at $200 as of the time of this recording. And this is of particular interest because it is the only external GPS, at least from what I've seen, that updates at 25 Hertz. The second one on the list is the QSTAR BL1000 GT, which I found listed for $239, which I gotta say seems a little overpriced considering the other options on the market. Now, Race Chrono also does mention QSTAR's BL818 GT, which also comes in at 10 hertz, which I found listed for $150. The third one is the Dual XGPS 160, which I found listed for $165. So next up, we have the Android list, which is exactly the same as the iPhone list with the extra addition of the Garmin Glow and the Garmin Glow 2. So with this uh, GPS, you do get slightly less refresh rate. You get about 7 8 hertz um, compared to the 10 of the other ones. And uh, this is the one that I use because it actually comes in at a slightly more budget friendly $100. Now the cheapest external GPS that I found that I know works is the QSTAR BT Q818 XT, which just rolls off the tongue super easy. This GPS uh, only comes in at about 85 bucks, which is the absolute lowest I've seen and is rated for 10 hertz as well. Just keep in mind that this one is Android only. Race Chrono actually lists this one on their website as not compatible with iOS. For mounting your GPS, I just bought some adhesive reclosable fastener tape thingy off uh, Amazon and literally threw it on the dashboard since I didn't want to hard mount the GPS. 
I'm sure there's better ways of mounting it, but that's just what I did and it seems to be working totally fine for me. Next, we need to pick up an OBD2 port reader. Prices on these things seem to drastically vary, but the main thing you want to look for is, again, what is the refresh rate? And uh, it seems to range from around 50 hertz to about 10 hertz, depending on what you buy and how much money you put out. I didn't know this was a thing when I bought one, but apparently the refresh rate is shared between channels. So the more channels you plan on recording, the higher refresh rate is going to matter. The example Race Chrono's website gives is if you need to log three channels and your adapter achieves 15 hertz update rate, it means it's five hertz update rate for each of the channels. Now, if you're going to cheap out in any of these areas, uh, I would recommend cheaping out for the OBD2 reader. Uh, I just doubt you would notice a huge difference in performance unless you're recording a bunch of channels. So for iPhone options, Race Chrono recommends the OBD Link MX Plus, which is a 50 hertz option uh, coming in at $140, the OBD Link CX coming in at $80, and the Carista Bluetooth OBD, uh, which ranges from around 10 to 15 hertz, coming in at $30. So for Android, same deal, only addition is going to be the OBD Link LX, which is actually the one I have. Uh, it's currently at $90, but I actually got it around a year ago for about $75. Next up, phone mounts. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but I definitely prefer having my phone staying in place when I'm on track. Uh, the thought of it getting launched around the car has always made me really apprehensive about using that kind of mount. Uh, so I made sure I bought something that's solid. Uh, I've used like really cheap shitty ones off Amazon before in the past and I do not trust them for sure. For a phone mount, there, there's a ton of options out there, but if you're curious which one I use and recommend, I bought the RAM Xcript phone holder mount from Rare Mounts. Um, definitely not the cheapest option, but uh, I have absolutely no complaints about it and no regrets. Extremely sturdy, love that thing. All right, so next we can kind of go through the cost breakdown for your lap timer. I bought Race Chrono for about 20 bucks. For the external GPS, I picked out the Garmin Glow 2 for 100 bucks. The 3M fastener adhesive, if you want to count that, was 13 bucks. Uh, the OBD2 port reader that I picked out was $74, which is a, probably a hair excessive, but uh, the RAM XRIP phone mount uh, was $60. My total cost ended up being $267 compared to the AIM Solo 2, which is listed at $460. And you could even make that cheaper if you, you know, took out the OBD2 reader or uh, even just went with one of the cheaper options. You could still have all that functionality, but that leaves you still with a around $200 price difference, which I think is pretty great. Now that you have everything you need, all you need to do is make sure you pair the GPS and the OBD2 reader to Race Chrono. Open up the settings by tapping on the settings icon on the top right, and then all you gotta do is just add in both of them, and you're done. Now, if you wanna export your data and overlay, you got a couple options. Uh, personally, I use Race Render, uh, but Race Chrono actually has a video overlay tool, so you don't need to use any other external program if you don't want to. Uh, Race Render does have a free version of their software, but you can only export a maximum of three minutes of footage, plus it has that giant watermark. Now to compare our setup to the AIM Solo 2, which was our goal to try and match its specs. I originally thought that the AIM Solo 2 had a GPS refresh rate of 50Hz, as their product description claims, and I quote, the lap times are calculated with a maximum gap not higher than 2 one hundredths of a second, which translates to 50Hz. But what I think they were actually referencing there was the 50Hz that their accelerometer and gyro go up to. I'm by no means an expert, but I was digging through their manuals and spec lists, and I'm not sure if they mean they calculate lap times with more than just the GPS, you know, using the accelerometer and gyro, but if I'm reading this table correctly, it does seem like the only way they measure distance is with GPS, but I guess that doesn't necessarily mean that that's how they calculate lap times. I don't know. Like I said, not an expert. I was just kind of curious and digging into it. Um, if you guys have an answer, definitely let me know because I'm curious. That being said, even if we didn't reach the specs of the AIM Solo 2, the bang for buck is huge with this setup and I highly recommend you try it out. But yeah, I think that pretty much does it. Um, if you guys have any other questions, drop them in the comments below if I missed anything and uh, I'll try to follow up with you guys. If you like the video, do me a favor, hit that like button. Uh, I'm planning on doing videos at least once a week, that's what I'm trying to stick to. So if you subscribe, I'd appreciate it. All right, thanks for watching.